Hi, I'm Rick Jansen and this is my Fly Tying channel. You know, one of the joys of living on Vancouver Island is the variety of fisheries that one can pursue here. One of the most exciting of these is the fall coho salmon fishery. This is when these silver torpedoes start to home in on their natal streams. They prowl the beaches in relatively shallow water where we as flying girls can reach them. These are explosive fish with a reputation for taking long screaming runs. It isn't unusual for them to go 100 yards into your backing. At times like this, your heart will be in your throat. If that kind of thing excites you, and I know it excites me, then you're going to want a selection of sturdy flies to stand up to these fish and the marine environment. One of the best of these is a fly known as the Kelsey's Hope. It's simple to tie and strong. So let's take a look at the Kelsey's Hope today. Welcome to my fly bench. You know, off the top, I want to give credit to Nick Didlick for coming up with this fly pattern years ago and naming it after his daughter. This fly meets all three requirements that I have for a good salmon fly. First, it's got to be effective in attracting fish to bite. Second, it should be simple to tie. And third, it needs to be sturdy. So let's take a look at the materials you're going to need to tie the Kelsey's Hope. If you like this video, please tap that subscribe button on the bottom right of your screen. Thank you. Into my vise, I've got a Tiemco number no. 8 2X long hook in the nickel plated version. I like to use nickel plated or stainless steel hooks when I'm fishing in the marine environment as they don't corrode as fast. If you go with bronze, you'll have to be constantly rinsing off your hooks to prevent the rust from spreading around your fly box like a virus. So I'm attaching to that my 6 aught black tying thread and uh, just behind the eye getting it secured in place. And our first material to come in is going to be our clear monofilament. And I'm using a Trilene, Berkeley's Trilene 12 pound test for the overbody. Uh, as this is one of the more transparent lines and I like the the way that the mylar underneath shows through and flashes quite nicely. This is a virtually invisible fly line tied onto a hook. And uh, what we'll do is secure that down the length of the hook. We'll take our tying thread and wrap it back creating a long slender body that uh, the mylar can lie on without uh, leaving gaps or having obstacles to try to climb. Okay, so bring that forward. And the only adjustment I've made to this fly is the in the mylar. They used flat silver mylar before, and I'm using the holographic. Um, maybe the original fly at that time, uh, the holographic mylar wasn't available, uh, but it is now, and I believe it represents the scales on a bait fish more accurately. And it has a lot of flash and sparkle. I like the look of it, so I've uh, made that very small adjustment to this fly pattern. Now I want to tie it in there at the just behind the eye, and then we're going to wind it back and then forward again so that we have a thorough covering of the hook shank. And because we're doing two passes, I don't worry too much about gaps on the way back, but I will be concerned with covering them on the way forward. So you can see we're getting a nice coverage there. Uh, a nice even base of mylar that uh, is going to be very attractive and sparkly in the water. Uh, Co seem to like a lot of flash and sparkle and uh, they uh, take it with relish. So this is uh, the way we go with many of our flies here. That's the way we, go, we swing. And this is uh, the thorough coverage covering forward and back with the mylar and then we'll cover that with the monofilament to give it the sturdiness it needs to stand up to fish teeth and the other hazards in the marine environment. So we'll tie that off 
and give it a couple of secure wraps there to make sure it's not going to go anywhere. Then we come forward with the monofilament and tight turns. I like to put one behind the mylar and then start working my way forward in touching turns. Now if we miss a turn or leave a gap, now I see I've done something odd there so I want to correct that. There we go. Uh, we're not too worried about it because we want that mylar to show through. This is sort of a, a, a shield for it from the fish's teeth. But uh, I'm getting some nice touching turns there and keeping them as close as I can to each other so that uh, we've got a thorough coverage of that mylar. And it gives a little translucent to that, to that body. I think is also an attractive feature of this fly. Now because this is a fairly stout material, I want to make sure it's thoroughly tied off before you cut it off. Um, I like to do several wraps behind and in front just to make sure that's not going to go anywhere when we give that thing a cut. So we snip that tag end off of there and then it comes our first underwing is our pearlescent crystal flash and this is uh, we get maybe I don't know eight or ten strands of that and we're going with just a, about a third of the length longer than the bend of the hook. We don't want it too long. If you go out too long, what will happen is that in the casting and retrieving process, that material, that long material, will start to caulk in the bend of the hook there, and it won't swim right. If you keep it shorter, uh, you will prevent that from happening. So I go with about a third of the length past the, past the bend of the hook there. So we'll give a loose loop to that, and another one. And then we secure that in place and cut off the tag ends there. Fairly easy fly to tie at this point. Not much to it. I missed one. I'm going to give that tag end a cut. There we go. Now we're coming in with our green polar bear hair. And as I mentioned uh, in other fly patterns, if you can't get polar bear, then bucktail will do. And so will synthetic hair. So you need, need be concerned if you don't get polar bear in your market. Now I'll give that a cut and I pull out the fluff on the end and polar bear comes in when you cut it off the hide it's all sorts of lengths there right so you want to even that up you can use a stacker but I prefer to just pinch the ends of the longest ones and then stack them into the pile and then repeat that process a few times looking for the, the longest ones pulling them out and then stacking them into the pile and I'll repeat that process a few times till I get a nice even looking stack of hair and just a few long ones there sticking out again it's just a nice way to to even things up a bit okay I think I've got the bunch there that I want and I'm going to go with the same length as the crystal flash so we'll tie that in place give it a few secure wraps polar bear is fairly stiff so as you pull up on this end the front end the tips will move because it's a stiff material and uh, I like to make sure it's secured in place really well before I do that. Now I'll go slightly less dense with the blue polar bear that's going to top the fly out as the final wing. And I've got a piece of it there I cut for a previous fly and I sorted it out. And I stacked it and I pulled out the tufts. So there we go. We're going to uh, throw that in there when I've got something going on there with an odd crystal flash so I'm just going to trim that one out it's not behaving and we'll top that off with the blue blue polar bear in the same way we did the green about the same length as the crystal flash so there you have the Kelsey's Hope um, dandy fly you'll want to strip this fast coho like to chase things down so uh, when you see a school of coho you believe they're in the area then uh, lay it out there let it settle and when you believe the coho around it starts stripping it in fast four to six inch pulls when they do take it's a smashing hard hit and a screaming run usually on the first run will make you believe that they're never going to stop if you fly fish pink salmon uh, it'll seem like they go on three or four times as long as a pink will and uh and it's scary at first you're not in control the deaf fish definitely is and after that first run and you start bringing the fish back you feel you have a modicum of control and they'll surprise you and do it again 
Enjoy tying this fly and enjoy more feeling the tight lines when one takes. Good luck out there and thank you for watching.